Welcome back everybody. This is Mohawk Motors. My name is Jason. So I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between two videos. Today I'm going to see if I can measure and do math as well as I think I can measure and do math. And if we can get this 4L80 swapped into Matt's 1986 K10. So I've got a little bit of pre-assembly to do and prep to get everything ready to go back in. And then we're going to lift it up in there and see if it actually fits and if the cross member is in the factory location like I think it's going to be. Uh, yeah, so let's, let's get this prep work done and I'll show you what we have. And then we'll start getting stuff put together and put into the truck. All right, everybody. So got all my parts gathered up here. We're going to do some pre-assembly. And this stuff came from multiple sources. Facebook Marketplace. Uh, Matt found the remanufactured transmission on Facebook Marketplace. I think he got a pretty good deal on it. And uh, we're using the, the range switch original to the truck, to the donor truck and harness. We've got some new input and output speed sensors, a new transmission to transfer case adapter, new gasket. Oh, what else? We're going to get the, we have the, the uh, little shifter bracket that works with the square body style bar shifter. And we've got a new torque converter here. So all this stuff will work together. And uh, when I get into the wiring, I'm going to point out some other differences. But there is one thing about this transmission that's going to help us in this swap and make it a little bit easier. Uh, that I want to show you before we get too far into it. So in the 4L80 transmission, all 4L80s have an input speed sensor and it goes in this hole right here. And I think you can see inside of there, there's, there's a reluctor wheel. It's made into the outside of the input drum. All 4L80s will have that. Now, two wheel drive 4L80s also all have an output speed sensor and that goes right here now what's going to help us in this case is this is a remanufactured 4l80 when they remanufactured it they used a two-wheel drive output so inside of here we have the tone ring for the output speed sensor in most four-wheel drive 4l80s from the factory, they will not have that output tone ring because the vehicle picks up the output speed at the back of the transfer case. And they use that to account for high and low range. In this circumstance, that really makes my life a little bit easier because I'll be able to use this sensor as my output speed for the computer, but still use the mechanical speedometer output for the actual speedometer in the truck. So it saves me from having to, they do make uh, mechanical to electric output adapters that you can put on here and they'll give you the, the signal of, I can't remember how many pulses per mile it is to work with the LS computer. But having that output tone ring, it really just saves us a little bit of money, a little bit of effort, and uh, it, it, it'll simplify and clean up the installation a bit. So I'm gonna get the speed sensors installed. I'm gonna get the uh, transmission to transfer case adapter installed, range indicator. I'm probably gonna put it down on a dolly before I put the torque converter into it. And then we'll get the little uh, the shifter bracket thing put on out here also. I think that's it. Everything else we'll do once it's actually in the truck. The cooler lines, the dipstick, all that jazz. Okay, so my input speed sensor goes right here. I always like to put just a little anti or uh, automatic transmission fluid on just to help it slip in. Give it a little wipe. And then a little push pops right in and I have my little factory 10 millimeter bolt 
These I always put a little dabby of anti-seize on because oh, I've seen a lot of them seized in there and that is not a place where you want to break off a bolt. There we go. Left hand did not want to thread that bolt in there. There we go. And our output speed sensor. Same thing, little dab of ATF around the O-ring. A little wipe off inside the bore. And that should slip right in as well. So next we've got our little range indicator. Now a pro tip on these things, anytime you remove or install one of these, make sure the transmission is in park. So if you pull it straight off when it's in park and put it straight back on when it's in park, everything should line up. So it'll indicate the correct range that the transmission is actually shifted into. And in case you didn't know, park is this shaft twisted as far as it'll go clockwise. So, get this lined up here. Push it right in. I like to put a little dab of anti seize on these bolts also. Because I've had them seize in on me as well, which is not fun. There we go. Those are snug. Perfect. We get the little linkage thing guy here. <laughs> This little fella, he goes just like so. That's all snugged in. Perfect. Now we have our transmission to transfer case adapter. Now we're using this 4L80 transmission. We are going to use the factory NP208 transfer case. It's a great transfer case. It's plenty strong. Plenty strong. Um, they GM actually did put the NP208 in the one ton trucks. Um, so it's not going to have any trouble with what we're doing here. And in order to get the, to the 4L80 mounted up to the MP208, that's a new process transfer case. A new process uses a standard six bolt flange pattern. So this adapter actually is from like a early 2000s, like a 2001 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD that was a floor shift four wheel drive. Uh, a little compatibility tip there that'll help. Another thing that I see all the time on these transfer case adapters, I take them apart and this surface that goes up against the transmission is always just caked in RTV because they start to leak, right? Or somebody took the transfer case out and put it back 
and didn't realize that there's a gasket that goes in there. And this is a circular square cut gasket. And it fits right down in this little groove that's machined all the way around. If you don't have that gasket, you're gonna have leaks. Even if you RTV the poo out of this thing. There's a lot of torque and a lot of force exerted on this adapter between the transmission and transfer case. So this rubber gasket, rubber seal, is a much more forgiving sealer than that RTV. And it'll just barely protrude beyond the face. But that's all it takes to seal it. There's no pressure back here, guys. The only fluids that come back here is anything that manages to weep past the output seal of the transmission and then it drains back into the transmission. So there's no pressure, nothing like that. That little rubber gasket is all you need to keep this thing sealed up. Are these the wrong bolts? Hold on, I grabbed the wrong bolts. Okay. Our adapter. The correct bolts. And as always, team, start them all before you tighten any. All right, sorry about that team. Camera overheated, need a little while to cool off. It's working again now. So got the transmission down on the dolly. We got all our sensors put on. We've got our transmission and transfer case adapter on. We've got the transmission mount put on. That's as far as I'm gonna assemble this before I get it in the truck, with the exception of getting the torque converter on it. So I already did a test fit on the torque converter fits perfectly just like it should so now i'm going to go ahead and get the torque converter filled with transmission fluid as full as i can get it usually you can get like one and a half or two quarts of fluid into the torque converter before you put it in the transmission and then i'll get the converter on the transmission and we'll get the transmission under the truck and that concludes the easy part of this installation <laughs> the uh I've got a, I've worked out a few tricks to make it less difficult to install transmissions on the ground like I am. And I'll probably show you as I get going with those, but yeah, uh, not much to show until that point. So I'll bring you back when I have something to show you and hopefully that'll be getting this transmission up, mounted into the truck, bolted to the back of the engine and the cross member into place. All right, everybody. Well, we're under the truck. The transmission is under the truck. And uh, I'm getting ready to lift it up into position to where it needs to be. And I'm noticing that I'm going to have some clearance issues. So the ones I see right out of the gate, and this is a common problem, is see this ear that sticks out? And this is a bell housing bolt, dowel pin bolt, or dowel pin hole bell housing bolt hole and then over here we have this ear that sticks out well that ear is going to be in the way it's going to inter interfere with our header fortunately that ear I mean at least to my knowledge serves no function so we can cut that off with a sawzall no problem there on the other side you can see we have the similar style ear right here. And I don't have that side's header on yet, but I'd be willing to bet it's gonna be a clearance problem on that side also. So, before I go any further, I'm gonna spin the transmission around and get those two ears cut off. Cause those are gonna make it a nightmare to try to get this thing lifted up into position. Once I get those cut off and out of the way, I think everything else is going to be okay. I'm looking at it by eyeball measurement of about where the engine is going to, or where the transmission is going to sit. And I'm pretty sure 
My rear cooler line is gonna clear my transfer case shift linkage. Um, but everything else I think is gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna get those ears topped off and I'll probably go ahead and start lifting it up into where it's gonna be, where its new home is. And then I'll bring you guys back. <laughs> All right, team, still under here, making progress. So I got the two ears trimmed off the transmission. So we'll have clearance for our headers. And if you can see here, this is how I do transmissions on the ground. Most of the time, my transmission jack will not lift the transmission high enough in one go. So what I'll do is use the jack to lift the transmission up and then I'll run some ratchet straps over the frame rails and under the transmission. And I'll use the ratchet straps to hold the transmission up. That way I can lower the transmission jack, and put some blocking underneath the transmission on the jack pad. And that'll give me, usually that gives me enough additional lift to get the transmission up to where I need it to be. So, is it as convenient as just having a transmission jack and a lift? No. Does it work? Yes. So, I'm going to finish getting this thing up there, bolted up to the back of the engine, and making sure that everything fits the way it should. Shouldn't be any issues. Should line up really well. Everything should go right together. And then we'll see if this transmission cross member is in fact still going to line up with the, with the frame mounting holes. All right, well, <laughs> yet again, that just went way smoother than is typical for me. I've got the transmission all bolted up to the engine. All six bell housing bolts are in. I mean, really, it, it lined up very easily, pulled right up. Push, I was able to push it right up against the back of the block on the dowel pins and then get the bolts in it to, to hold it there. And uh, you can see under here, my flex plate and torque converter. They've got, I mean, just, a, just over, I'm gonna call it maybe a, a quarter inch of pull out to get the converter bolted up to the flex plate, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So I'm very happy. I'm gonna get the starter pulled down out of the way, get the torque converter bolts put in, and actually I think before I do that, I'm gonna lift it up and see if I can't get the transmission cross member lined up, because that's what I'm really like I'm really anxious to see if this lines up like I think it's going to, like it should. So I'm gonna lift it up parallel to where it should be, and then I'm gonna get these, uh, get this cross member and see if it won't bolt right back up into the factory holes. Cross your fingers for me. All right, everybody. Well, it's in there. Got the cross member mounted up, and it mounted right back into the original holes. Both sides. Transmission is right where it needs to be. Cross member is right where it needs to be. Mount is right where it needs to be. Everything lined up exactly how my math said it would. So I'm really happy about that. It's uh, It saves Matt and me from having to get his drive shafts modified. We're going to be able to just put the, uh, the 32 spline input in his transfer case and then bolt the, the factory transfer case back up. It reduces so many other customizable and changed and, and different pieces that he's not gonna need now. This is gonna be much more serviceable, much more reliable, and, and just, uh, in my opinion, much cleaner. It's going to be a much cleaner installation because there's not going to be a bunch of stuff that you can look at and tell obviously isn't factory. Like, I mean, there aren't even going to be holes in the frame that weren't, weren't there from the factory. So really excited. I'm glad that worked out. I'm glad it bolted up and fit up exactly how I thought it was going to. And, uh, 
I think that's going to be it for this video, everybody. Give you a little closing shot there. We'll get the dipstick mounted in next time. Uh, I realized when installing that we forgot to order a dipstick tube and dipstick, but a plain old uh, dipstick tube and dipstick for any 99 to 06 pickup that came with a 6 liter and a 4 L80E will fit this application. It's it's tight enough to the block and the bell housing that it's going to clear the, the firewall and everything just fine. So we'll get that ordered so I can get that put in and then we'll probably start figuring out the transmission cooler lines but I think there's enough clearance between the headers and the transmission that a set of factory style transmission cooler lines are going to fit as well which also just saves on trying to hunt down custom pieces, custom parts. So, yeah, I'm pumped, team. This thing is looking really, really good. It's coming together really smoothly, and uh, I think it's going to be an awesome finished product. Thanks again for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed, and until the next video, take care.